Excellent. So I want to say welcome, welcome, everybody. I'm absolutely excited here. Nine at night, it's all about the speech tonight. There is so much happening when it comes to your voice and to the stage and being heard. Did you know one voice can change and one word can change people and move mountains? And we just celebrated Martin Luther King last week. And he did that. He changed the world, the way of thinking. So it's absolutely exciting how important that is. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have some wonderful, uh, I have a wonderful co-host that's going, I'm going to bring on really quick. And we we just love making a difference when it comes to this show with Nine at Night. This is Monday night. I have Monday, mo Nine at Night every weekday night, Monday, Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday with a different theme every night. So Monday night, it's all about the speech. And the exciting part is you wait till you learn and find out what it's all about. We have a wonderful guest, a wonderful speaker today. We're so excited to have with us. So again, this is you changing the world one person at a time. So with that, I, I want to introduce my co-host. He's absolutely amazing. And he definitely makes a difference when it comes to speaking. He's a master coach in that arena for anybody. He coaches through Zoom, so people around the nation and around the world. And now he's going to be coaching and working with us. But welcome, Mr. Sean Walker. Hi, Christine. Hi, Vincent. Hi, everybody that's actually watching this. I'm excited to be here as we do every Monday night. We have a lot of fun here. It's exciting. I enjoy what we do as speakers and at nine at night. And I enjoy having guests like we always do. This is an amazing platform that we have created. We've created to give individuals an opportunity to be spotlighted. And I'm happy. <laughs> With the, oh, I'm so glad you're happy, Sean. <laughs> The world turns. And so right now we have our moment where we talk about speaker tips. And that is where you're going to get a tip from each of us about something to do with speaking on stage. And so I'm going to turn it over to Sean. He's definitely going to start off with his tips for tonight. I'm excited to do that right now. And I'm going to be talking about the tonality. And I'm going to share three things that one must learn when speaking in public, the tonality is the most important part. How do you say it? The tone you use in conveying your message. Number one in tonality, you must be sharp. That's right. You have to be well put together. You got to be sharp. You got to be crisp from the time you open your mouth. You only have four seconds to capture your audience. That's right, it's four seconds. For the first four seconds, whatever you say out your mouth, an individual will determine whether they want to continue to listen to you or not. Number two, enthusiasm. As you can see right now, every time I speak, I bring that enthusiasm and that captures your audience or an individual you're speaking to. They want to feel your energy. Are you excited about what you're about to share? The message or the product? Are you excited about it? Because if you're not excited about it, what's going to make them want to listen to you? And number three, one must be an expert. That means you have to research the product or research your project when conveying a message or service or product. They want to know that you know what you're talking about. So they can make their sound decision to follow you in terms of listening to your communication skills and style. This is just something I wanted to speak about today, and it is the tonality. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it back over to you. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. You are amazing. And I appreciate your tips always, Master Coach. And that is Sean Walker. A moment with Sean is he has it on his hat. That's what you want to experience. And I'll tell you what, it's phenomenal. I am going to talk about 
some tips. We have, we belong to Toastmasters. Many of you belong to Toastmasters, but there's another platform that you can actually do your speaks, uh, your speaking on. And that is a TED Talk, a TEDx Talk, right? And if you haven't heard of that, I want you to Google it really fast. It's T-E-D-X dot com and you'll find out what it is but i we have some tips again the tips we have 10 tips on being a really really good ted talk presenter number one know your audience keep in mind who you're going to be addressing study we have i have a friend and she's speaking her next her second ted talks is next weekend she practices 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 over a hundred times plus and she is perfect when she gets on stage. Number two, keep it simple, especially if you're going to give a talk in a general audience. A lot of times people use all the PowerPoint slides. There has been a TED Talk, the most watched. There was no PowerPoint slides. So you can definitely make get creative on this and capture the attention. Number three, emphasize connection over content. You want to engage your listeners. And the tonality, what Sean just talked about, definitely helps you with that. The power of the presence, that is what's powerful. The power of the pause. You want to catch attention in any way. Four is be authentic, be you. Discover who you are so you can find your voice, sing your song, per se. And that's exciting because it is a new exploration to all about you. Five, diversify your delivery. Don't just do the same stuff. You know, everyone says, I am this name and, and I do this and stuff. Start off with a, a question, a statement that no one would ever think came out of your mouth. You want to definitely diversify your delivery to start off and throughout the whole thing. There was one international contest I saw through Toastmasters where a woman was actually putting her clothes on over clothes but to make a point to go with the story. And guess what? It was worked. Everybody was watching what was going to happen. Number six is shake it up. Be compelling. Get something to. You can use video, audio, gestures, and you can use the slides. I'm not saying don't use them, but not every word. And don't read those slides word for word. No way. But do something that's just powerful. Seven is stick to your points. Before you talk, determine your main points, outline them, and make sure you don't want to rush this out. You want to make sure there's connection. Eight, know the setup. Have you been on that stage? Do you know how much you can talk? Is it tiny stage? Is it a large one where you have room to roam? You want to get that all set up. Nine, don't lecture the whole time stories. People love stories. Engaging video or something. Have, have humor in it. Create work, work with the emotions, the sad, the touching, the laughter. And lastly, leave time for questions. Talking until the last minute is a common mistake many speakers make. And what you want to do is leave them wondering. And you can leave a challenge too. That means you're putting it to, you know, see if they really listen. Right now, that's a lot. But why not go TED Talk? Back to you, my co-host, incredible moment with Sean, Sean Walker. And thank you, Christine. I'm excited tonight because we have had some great tips, but we also have what we always do is we bring in speakers and we give the speakers the opportunity to come on and speak. And so I appreciate I, it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so we have with us to speak, I'm so excited to have Vincent Ewing Jr. I'm so excited to have him. He. A little bit about him, he definitely is a believer in God. He's a husband of one wife, father of four daughters and one son. He's self-employed, inspirational speaker, member of two Toastmaster clubs, and he's also an area director. 
His favorite scriptures is Proverbs 23, 7. As a man, woman, think in their heart, mind, so are they. Oh, I love that. And that's one of my favorites too. He currently is still living home in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas. And so with that, let's just meet our speakers. Thank you, Vincent. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Christine. Thank you to our listening audience. Yes, all the way from the Bahamas. And before I even begin, thank you for that introduction. I would give one more tip, just one tip, no three, four, five, one tip. Use stories that you have lived to give a speech. You would be surprised at how genuine, natural, and engaged your audience would be. That would be my tip for the night. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for inviting me and having me in. I'm in the building, I'm in the building. Nine at night on the air. Thank you so much. And before I even give a speech, before, you gotta do this different. Do one of my hosts have a question for me? Something that they would like to ask me before I start. Yes, I do. What brought you to be such a powerful, inspirational speaker? Why did you have it inside you to say, I'm doing this and my voice counts? It, it's profoundly strange that most of us have a speaking voice. But when we were kids, we're told so much to be quiet that we never engage in hearing. You remember the first time you ever heard your own voice, how started you were? That's because you were always told for almost 18 years of your life, be quiet. But the minute you find your voice, and it's in every one of us, believe you me, all you need is the opportunity. So with my voice, I had it, I tell you no lie, at an early age, they were always, Vince, speak for us. And I was like, no, not really. But as I got older, got married, wife and kids, as a man, you're always the leader. I'm sorry, but you're always the leader. And to be a leader, not just have a strong voice, but have discipline. So that's where this inspiration and motivation came from. <laughs> Thank you very much for that question, Christine. Thank you. And I got a question for you. One second, Vincent. No problem. I, I know I know we work together, but I'm going to say that afterwards. But are you excited to be a part of this? How was it getting a last minute call? In? Just, just, just how did that make you feel when you saw my, you got my text today and you got my phone call? <laughs> it's like being a kid in the candy store. I live for this. As you heard in my bio, I'm a part of two clubs and I am an executive member of both clubs and I'm an area director. Before I came on tonight, I was in Club Wellington in West Palm Beach and I was the Ah Am Kauro. It's a privilege. The kid in the candy store, that's what I got from your text. The call, I'm bumping. We have a place in the Bahamas called Mortimer's Candy Kitchen. They make candies in what you would call a food truck and they make them fresh every day. So I was like going to Mortimer's Candy Kitchen and get some homemade candies. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. So in turn, going to Wellington, it was like a warm up to coming on nine at night on air. It was, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. I'm sorry. I'm just pumped. <laughs> I love it. I think it's absolutely fabulous. My, my picture is going wacko. But you know what? I love your enthusiasm. And that is why you are good at what you do. Now, I want to hear your speech so bad. And we've got a lot of questions afterwards. That's, that's not a problem. 
my speech title for tonight is I get to. I get to. I was born in 1970 in a place in the Bahamas in our capital. I was born to a single mother. And at the time of my birth, it was a bit of a struggle in the 70s. So she left me with my, my grandmother, her mom. So I grew up most of my life in New Providence with my grandmother for the first nine years of my life. So just imagine being born, growing up in the Bahamas, but not with your mom, but with, with your grandmother. At nine years old, my mom sent for me because she wasn't living on New Providence, which is another island. She was living here on Grand Bahama, which is Freeport. And she sent for me. So as you can imagine, I had withdrawn symptoms. I was like, go to live with mom in Freeport? Really? Why would I need to do that? But as we all know, you don't pick your parents. You do not pick your parents. I repeat one more time, we do not pick our parents. But that was a blessing in disguise. I came to Grand Bahama, started school. And as I said in the beginning, I get to. We weren't the richest of families. But guess what happened when I came? I could get in no public school on the island. No public school. And in this island, they had seven public schools. There was no space in any of them. So guess what happened? I had to be sent to a private school. So guess what? I got to get a private education. So we're still thinking, Vince, what is this I get to? What does I get to mean? Get to means I got to grow up with my grandmother who taught me. Modest and respect will take you through the world. Then I got to live with my mother, who was a disciplinarian. Attention! And that was my get to. All these times brought back fond memories of New Providence and Grandma's cooking, but the I get to's are coming again. During those years of high school, primary school in Grand Bahama, my mom taught me one of the most important lessons that I literally had to learn. And most of us learn it after we become of age, which is maybe 18 or 21. You are responsible for everything that happens to you. You are responsible for everything that happens to you. I get to. I learned that during my high school years. My mom was a single parent, as I told you in the beginning. She had a daughter after I came to live with her, my sister, Deandra, brilliant young lady. In turn, what she did is, Mom didn't do homework with you. All she did was make sure you did it. And she had a rule in her house. There are only one kind of grades that you bring home. A's. A's. And we have the three-letter word that you would get a cut. You know what? If you didn't bring A's. <laughs> and she had to be a disciplinarian because she was growing up a young man without a husband. But that never deterred her from teaching me that you are responsible for everything that happens to you. So that was my get to. My get to in turn came along with my sister that was born. I'm the oldest. And as all of us know, in the Caribbean, when you're the oldest child, if there's not a father or mother, you become the father or mother. So I got to be a parent at the age of 10, <laughs> which was no problem. But going back to the beginning, but living with my grandmother, she taught me how to nurture 
love and take care. So when I came to my mother and she taught me the disciplines of you're responsible for what happens to you, that all worked into play because my mom worked shifts. So we went to school, I picked up and I took over. So I got to. But then another thing happened. My mom had another child, my little brother. So now it's three of us having this party and I still get to because of all the things that my grandmother taught me at the beginning and my mother taught me in the middle. After all of this, you would still think, oh, it's challenging, no dad, only mom, brother, sister, you have to take care of. In my early years, it was frustrating. But this, I get to, and that you're responsible for what happens to you, it doesn't make you mature, but it does make you wise. Because in all of those years, what I was developing was this voice that you hear now. The voice that encourages someone that is the oldest child and has to help their mom or dad take care of brother or sister. You get to. The child that has to wash dishes, clean the kitchen, make lunch, walk your sister or brother to school. You get to. Because when we think of all the other places in the world where you have families that are together, husbands and wives, who are sitting down in bomb shelters, who are ravaged by slave traders in human slave trading, selling body parts. But we get to live in two places in the world. You folks there in the United States, in Florida, and me here in the Bahamas, where this may not be as widespread, but we get to. We get to have lunch. We get to see beautiful sunsets. We get to walk on the beach. We get to see our grandparents. We actually become adults, have kids, and have our parents become grandparents. So as I said in the beginning, I get to. And it's all because you are responsible for what happens to you. In the beginning in my bio, Christine said, my favorite Bible verse, Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man think it in his heart, so is he. We have many mantras and we have many gurus that say what you have to say and say this many times. You can say it as much as you want, but if it's not in your heart, and I never want you to think your heart is in your chest, your heart is your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, if you don't renew your mind, all of the good things, all of the good things and bad things that God has put there for you that will lead to good, you will not see the opportunity. You will not see the time. You will not see it. And I told you, I just love the beginning. I got to be left in the providence with my grandmother who nurtured me and taught me how to love. I got to come and live with my mom who taught me to be disciplined and to gain my voice. I got to help to take care of my brother and sister. I got to. Now I get to take care of my wife and my beautiful kids. And I have grandkids too. We'll talk about that later. I get to. It's all about your get to. Don't worry about New Year's resolutions. And don't worry about the goal. The journey. The journey. And always remember, last but not least, you, you are responsible for what happens to you. So what are you going to do about it? Back to you, my host. Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, that is just sad. Bravo. <laughs> Woohoo. Oh my gosh, you've changed my life. That is, you know, everything that happens, I did it. <laughs> I get to as well. I love it. That is powerful. Thank you so much, Vincent. Thanks for sharing. Sean, what do you think? Wasn't that amazing? Uh, I, I, I was I was sitting here taking notes. And Vincent, don't. <laughs> I'm a note taker. And I just sit back and I just watch and I just smile. And 
I, I was just amazed about a lot of things that he said that he pointed out. It was just, it was just amazing. I get to too. What? <laughs> you all get to. You all get he starts to. off. He starts off taking charge. Well, I'm going to ask you guys, Claire. Do you have questions for me? You know, just just forget. Let's make this your show, okay? <laughs> you did a good job. That was Thank awesome. Well, well, he was paying attention because that tonality caught me right off the rip. I was like, okay, there you go. Let's go. Yeah, I was going through my top ten TEDx speaker list, and yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> this show's done we got we've been taught <laughs> we, we talked you. about it he showed the example see we 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 had that plant <laughs> i i was just amazed at, at, at just what you really brought to the, the table tonight vincent it was amazing i know you but i really got to know you within these seven minutes and Vincent and I, we had conversations on the phone a lot and we talked about a lot and we just jailed our enthusiasm, our, yeah. our chemistry, our personalities. And we, we, we worked together in Toastmasters. In yeah. fact, um, Vincent was my facilitator where I had to be the presenter. So he opened up and when he opened up, oh boy, I tell you. And I had to close the show behind him. <laughs> well, let, let's talk about what's next, Vincent. When are you going to be in a TED Talk stage? The, the, you might not believe this. You know, we like to say that we're busy. Mm -hmm. No lie. Truthfully, CC has spoken to me about it. My Golan has spoken to me about it. And I told him, I said, it's not that I don't want to. I said, you put a lot on my plate this year. I'm an <laughs> executive of two clubs. I have no lie, you know, like everybody, can, ah, excuse me, I can't come. No, I have meetings, truthfully, every, I have a meeting. I have three meetings tomorrow, starting at 12 until nine o'clock tomorrow evening, Toastmasters. I have two meetings on Wednesday. So I told them, I said, wait till after area contest. My area contest is on the 24th. After the 24th, once I've put the area contest in, once that in, because remember, as an AD, I'm not even allowed to really enter events. Yeah. I'm just allowed to speak all year. So I've been speaking. So I told her, I said, you guys short change me this year when you ask me to be an AD. <laughs> so what it is, is I like it. Because what I get to do, I get to fine tune what I'm doing now. So that when it comes to TEDx, and you know, in our Toastmasters culture, everybody is waiting to be a DTN. I'll give you an example of how this works for me. Remember, I'm in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. I never aspired to be a DTN because mm -hmm. when I joined Toastmasters, it wasn't, it was never about the DTM. It was always about helping others to achieve that fear, that window that stops us from being confident in speaking Mm -hmm. And I just wanted everybody to, to speak. Because remember, each one of us has a gift that has brought, we brought a gift to the world that these fruits need to be eaten by everyone. So unless we speak, who, who gets to eat this, this fruit that God sent you with? So basically, from being a president, VP of education, VP of public relations, and all this, they're like, Ugh. The only thing left for you to do is be the DTM. I say, well, I'm a DTM at my house. I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> because the title doesn't change. If no title that I can get in this world beats the first one that I put down, that I believe and I'm a child of God. Not, not, nothing beats that. And I have times when I even doubt myself, but I don't doubt God. So faith without works is dead and show me works without faith. I just, I love being a Toastmaster. This I love being a Toastmaster. All it is is sometimes the plates are big, sometimes the plates are small, but I get to be a Toastmaster. Well, and I really appreciate you guys don't know how much I appreciated this opportunity. Really, this is this is this might be more of an opportunity for you. No, it's more an opportunity for me. I really appreciate this. Well, you just make us smile and feel real good inside. <laughs> You know how to do this, right? I appreciate that. Yeah, well, back to you because it's going to come around big time. 
we uh i'll put this recording up i have a facebook page called nine at night dot okay. com we've um took over the the last holiday stuff i haven't had as much uh up there because i took a holiday and now, <laughs> now we're back and at it so we'll start uh, getting back in the seat again we have every weekday night we have different topics for example thursday night it's all about the money in fact i noticed that one of our guests is my co-host for thursday night so i'm going to allow ray patterson ray i know you got kudos to say about vincent because you texted me that's how i know you're on here so I'm going to allow you to talk so you can just tell Vincent what you told me. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I can hear you. You don't have I, to turn your camera on. Interesting. Uh, Vincent, very nice to meet you, my, my new friend. Um, you made a comment. Let me hang, hang on here one second here. I'm trying to. Vincent, I'm trying to do something that we men are are not good at. I'm trying to multitask. Unlike Christine, she's the queen of multitasking. <laughs> um, what you said about you are responsible for what you do. Yes, sir. That is, <clears throat> I wish everybody on the planet could hear that that statement right there um within the realm of what i do vincent i sometimes i'll hold up a legal pad that's blank and what i'll say when i hold that up is i'll say you are entitled the only thing you're entitled to is what's on that page right. uh, so when you said that <clears throat> kind of dovetailed over into what I say about having that blank piece of paper, because yes, you are, you are responsible for, for what you do and what you put on that paper. When you create those chapters in your given life, um, it, it becomes who you are. So the who becomes the what. So um, I just wanted to say kudos, my friend for uh, saying that. And um, uh, I just happened to come on here tonight and um, uh, to, to check this out. I'm very glad I did. So, and very, very nice to see you on here, my friend. And if there's anything I can ever help you with, Christine knows how to get a hold of me. I'd be glad to. So, thank you again so much. And thank you, I Christine. That. I appreciate yeah. that tremendously. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. We sure appreciate you. Well, what's exciting is, it's just meeting people all around the globe. Now, Ray and I, we have our co-host is on Friday night, Thursday nights. It's all about the money. He's a chartered financial analyst. He's on the same round table as Robert Kiyosaki and Mike Maloney, Jim Rickard, if you know them. And uh, and so we talk about some really good things. Some people may want to hear or may not, depending on where they're at in, in life and politics. I want to talk about it. So. I make sure that we have a clause that nine at night is not held accountable for anything. <laughs> so I am safe and he knows that. So, but isn't that cool? I Every weekday night, Wednesday nights, it's all about the talent. You could come back Wednesday night and sing a song if you want. You know, I have talent oh, cool. from all over the world, it's literally. Cool. And it's, uh, it, it's refreshing. This is so refreshing. I... Oh, I have words. Don't get me wrong. I have words. This is so refreshing. I really, oh man, you guys made my week. You guys made my week. Well, Trust we're going to make, make you the star everybody wants to meet. So you can be on TEDx when Cece asks you. <laughs> I'm, once, I'm telling you, once competition is done, once area competition is done, I don't have as much to do anymore. Just wait for the rest of the contest. So that would be then just to help, I do, I do. I want you to know that th this helps me to be so well-rounded. I'll give you an example. I'm an avid reader. I am an avid reader. I'm so sorry. I'm an avid reader. And you just spoke about Thursday night and finances. Oh, my gosh. The richest I man in no the world. <laughs> you understand? So 
I love it. Yeah. We're just... Sean, you you did something good here. Well, <laughs> I, I I just let I just allow what was within to come out. And I just want to say to Vincent that you made a valid point. And and when you say your heart is not here, no. but it's here. And, and 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 that is the biggest battle I had a saying. The grind is the mind. The grind oh, is the that's mind. Good. Because what? you have to renew your mind. It's a must. It's a must. In, in order for change to happen, you have to renew your mind. And and that's 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 when true change happens when one really dives deep you have to go get it from inside but you have to manifest it up top i totally believe in that now this is a funny story i mean it's funny now but i i started in a business i've never been in before about three years ago and i thought i don't know if i can grasp this i wanted to stay home work out of my home and and do that so i uh we have a little farm and i milk goats you know, I, we have a goat farm. I make lotions and soaps and, and those kind of things. And so we, and it's very healthy during COVID. We had milk, meat and eggs, and we had, you know, vegetables from our garden in the freezer in the wintertime. So what was exciting about this was I started to be really, I thought I can't do this and scared. So I, when I'm milking goats all day long until I went to bed, I was listening to YouTube videos like Les Brown, like <laughs> Jim Rohn, like Tony Robbins and my goats. That's all they heard. You know, I don't know if they, I think they produced more milk at that time. I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I did to keep me going. So I love the fact the mindset, the mind grind is the mind. I love that. Well, look at you too, man. <laughs> talk about inspirational bunch of guys. <laughs> well, you can I'll just... gi and I'll give you one more thing. I'll give you one thing. I'm here in my this is my wife's office. Don't get me wrong. But we we read a lot. We mm -hmm. we don't make the kids read. The kids have to read. You have to read me a book a week and you have to give me a report. So there's a Bohemian author. Do I have any give me one sec? I'll show you one. Give me one sec. <clears throat> I liked his clock on the wall. We can talk about him on his pictures, not when he's not here. <laughs> he said his wife did that clock on the wall. I want to my God. He had the numbers in different directions and when they were right. <laughs> okay. And okay. to give you an example, there are so many there there are so many. I use the word guru because it's more what's in tune now, but we, we have a lot of self-help books. John Ron, Les Brown, and you know, like most of the self-help guys, they're Americans. We have a self-help guy, gentleman in the Bahamas, in the person of Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe has over 50 books on New York's bestseller list. This is a bohemian. Yep. And he died in 2014. Yep. But I was already reading his books. Wow. And taking in his kingdom mindset, yes. because I, I will not make it about religion. It's a mindset. And he says, like he said, the grind, the mind is the grind. Until we change our thinking, no matter what we're doing, Albert Einstein said it best. Insanity is doing the same thing over mm -hmm. and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Mm -hmm. The hardest part of the grind in the mind is that we have to take the disc, that hard drive, and every bad habit, replace it with a new habit, and you're going to know. And then it's to accept that it is a bad habit and replace it with that new habit. I it's love that. Me saying it, me saying it, boy, it sounds like, yo, yo, I can do this. I can go and kill a lion. Hell no, you cannot. <laughs> so we digress to the point of where do I start? Yeah, like if you're eating a steak, right? you're eating a 12 ounce steak, you got to cut off a small piece and chew it. So make it edible parts. Make it edible parts and 
everyone is saying this. But don't get me wrong, everyone is saying it. But the problem with who is saying is that the person who is telling it to me already has everything. So sometimes we have to find a person who does have everything, but is willing to stretch their hands down and pull me up slowly but surely and use the sandwich method in Toastmasters. Something instructive, something to win, and then I top it off. I love that. <laughs> it's like I look at you and it's like, be happy, you know, everything is good. And so, so it's, I love it's, it. It's, it's as simple as it is. And like Sean asked the question, how would I feel about the call? I'm still excited because I was in the room. I told my wife, <laughs> and they, were, they were watching it. They said, where's this going to be? And I'm like, you're not going to watch it. They're going to put it up and I'm going to tell you where to go and watch it. But it's, they know, they they know what I want to do. And now you're starting to know what I want to do. What oh, is it? I don't want to, I don't want to motivate any of you. I don't want to motivate you. Anybody can be motivated. That means you're not going to, you're going to need me to motivate you again. Ah. I'd like to inspire you. Teach us to fish. And, 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 and that's, Vincent, that's something that you said that I was going to point out. See, I took notes. I was, I was listening. I well, Ray took notes too. So did I. <laughs> Encourage others with experience. That's the mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, Ray, Ray, t- Ray texted me real quick. He says to tell you that Thomas Sal has quoted Miles Monroe often. This, this, you know that, all right, that's another thing, but you know, we, we don't, in Toastmasters and our arms and our grammarians report and all that, do you know that Mars Monroe and Les Brown were best friends? I didn't know that. Did you know that, Sean? I know of the the, the work that they both did, and they're both similar in personalities. But I spent some time with Les Brown. I, I know had you have. Amazing, amazing time with Les. I got the picture to prove it. You made sure I saw it. <laughs> and just to give you an example of a story, my, Dr. Monroe told the story, and Les confirmed it many years later. But it was it just it blew my mind because the story is so it's a profound story. Les Brown was already speaking. He was already a speaker. Mars Monroe was coming up, an up and coming speaker, already a author and all of that. And he called, they were talking one day and they were on the phone this day. Uh, Les, I have, a, I have a company is calling me to do some leadership seminars. He said, what do you charge? So he told them, well, I charge like $10,000. He says, how much do you think I should charge? I'd maybe charge him five or six. He said, what? Five or six? You're a better speaker than I am. <laughs> and I was blown away because when he told the story, I'm like, oh, whatever, yeah. So in one of Des Brown's speeches, one of his talks many years later, he's like, yeah, my friend Mars Monroe. I was like, what, who, what, what? And he tells the story and I'm like, I'm floored. I'm like straight floored. I'm like, this is the kind of gifts we have in the world. But most of the time, we don't get to sample them until they're dead. Mm-hmm. So why sad. Yeah. Yes. He said that most people take what's in them to the graveyard. And, and that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's the, so that's the thing now. So I found out something today before we even spoke, before you even messaged me. And it was so Funny, I was riding with my son. We went to a basketball game. One of his friends was playing, so we went to, a bas- to the gym today and watched three basketball games. And on the way to the game, I had something playing and we were listening. And it said, this is the profound part. It said, a lot of us are searching for our purpose and our gift. Mm-hmm. Why are we searching? Maybe sometimes you are a gift because your job is to help somebody else become the gift. Mm. Oh, so you're killing me. Oh, you killing me. That is awesome. It's, it's oh, like, my gosh. I, I almost you get the call. call to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you're, you're, you're following your vibes correctly. 
<laughs> I, like I said, when Sean messaged me, I was in the process. I was putting a speech together. I have to give a speech tomorrow. And I was just putting my notes and all of that together. And I told him, I was like, it's like, a pod, I'm doing a podcast. And would you do it? And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> I wasn't as excited when I answered it, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, my day was amplified when I went to go get breakfast, like I said, this morning. I went to go get breakfast, and I had a shirt on at Miami Hurricanes. And then the lady, her and her husband were sitting, and she asked me, she said, well, what's a moment with Sean? She was an older lady. And I was like, well, you having one right now? And she started laughing. So we had a conversation, and then we had some laughs. I went to order. And as I was ordering, I was talking to the guy, and he asked me the same thing. So I explained to him. And I was going down to the cash register to pay for my food. And when I got down to the cash register, the lady said, oh, you can go on by. I said, go on by, what do you mean I can go on by? She said, your food has been paid for. And the <laughs> husband was standing there. He said, my wife paid for your food. <laughs> I was like, what? They're gonna and have a talk about it now. <laughs> No, he he paid for it. He paid. Oh, for he it. did. Oh, they At her discretion. Yes. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. Yeah. You know, you guys, and I had a great day too. Man, mine was fabulous, and this just tops it off. Just like you said, the sandwich, and that tops it off. That's it. That's this. That's it. That's it. And it's it's genuine. It's like I said when I gave the first part. The only tip I have is that use your story. That's just, it. Just use your story. Because if if you give if you give a speech on real life, wow. Wow. Well, I came up with a quote for that, Vincent. Stories tell, not fairy tales. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's it, man. That's he, it. He, he makes rap songs out of his quotes and they're good. <laughs> So, so everybody, are you ready to be a speaker? If you are not inspired by now after listening to Vincent and Sean, my co-host, you better be now because this is your moment to do this. And all you do is go to nineatnight.com and click on contact, contact me, and we will get you uh, to learn more about the show. I, uh, for Vince, I just want to say, I sure appreciate you. We're going to, my video is doing all kinds of weird things. But I sure, I don't know why, but see, all this electricity, it's just blowing up my, <laughs> you know, I love it. And uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. We sure appreciate you. And we definitely will have you back. That's not a problem. I'll be, I will be visiting. I'll be visiting. I'll be, I'll be in the gallery. I'll be visiting. Because when this this comes on as a part of your nine at night. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll just have to click on, would it be normally on a Facebook feed or would it have to be something else? No, it's on Zoom. You just go to nineatnight.com. It's the number nine at night.com. And then you scroll down the homepage and there's this big Zoom box. It says Zoom. You click on the box and it brings you right here. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, Invite, invite, invite. I'm going to send some. I have a lot of friends that stay up at night that they like the message. I'm going to give them something to do. Oh, excellent. They can check out Ray Patterson on Thursday night, too. <laughs> and and I, I, truly, I truly enjoyed this. No, no, no jokes. Like, wow. Yeah. That's, like, you know, as those masters, we have a lot to say. A lot of people miss us. We have a lot to say. But I tell them sometimes, wow is. Like more than enough. Well, more than enough. Now here's Maybe. something, Sean. I've never met Vince before. And but he was he was the one that said, Oh, well, I saw you on Saturday. And at this and Toastmasters just is a small world. I mean, I'm going, whoa, keep talking. These are nice words. <laughs> yep, because that we I've I've traveled because of Zoom. And I've I've traveled to so many places and the cultures for our Toastmasters is so different. So if you're up at night, it sounds weird, 
you know, some nights you can't sleep and you're not really to write or anything. If you pull up, pull up your Toastmasters website, truthfully, and just go to a club that's having a meeting and there is a Zoom meeting like every hour. I tell you no lie, if you pop in, once you pop in, you would be amazed at some of the ideas and the ingenuity and the the talent, the talent in those masters. I mean, not like giving a speech in the technical, it blows your mind. You're like, wow, I feel like a dinosaur. Well, <laughs> I feel like a dinosaur, but it's, it's, it's Well, fun. you and I can't compete, but Sean is in the competition. Lord. Yeah, so we got to just root for him. He's in the competition. And those winners, they beat out 30,000 contestants to beat the international. Can you believe that? Listen, listen. When you, when you talk about competition, sometimes with us as Toastmasters, we don't really understand, and this word is going to sound strange, the dexterity and the extent to which we compete. Like a lot of times people think it's like, oh, they're in the Bahamas, they're in South Florida, they're in District 47. It's like, you, seriously, you know what is District 47? Count how many numbers do you have up from District 47? How many divisions do you have with five and four clubs with each division has five clubs? In and I'm like, do you really know that we have over almost a quarter million Toastmasters. And I and like just, I sat down the other day and I really, really like gobbled up. I was like 255,000. Well, your trick is, is you don't sign up for area director anymore and that way you can <laughs> compete. <laughs> I and can't, I'm an area director. So Sean is the only one eligible to be. <laughs> And the thing about it, I I kid you not, when I say I did not put myself as an area director, I was given the call. I was called. Yeah. The deck wants to see what. Well, what? that's how that's how it calls. See, you guys are uh, are now area directors. Last mm -hmm. year, I was area director, <laughs> president, two term president, a, a <laughs> officer in another club. Exactly. No, three clubs. So I was a part of three clubs. I was an officer in one. I was the president of another one, area director, <laughs> overseeing six, well, four clubs at the time. And it's, and you know what, you know what's so funny? I give for the persons that will be watching this after, mm -hmm. I will give them something that will blow their minds, yours too, maybe. But think about it Toastmasters is the cheapest college you will mm -hmm. go to that teaches Bravo. you yes. Yes. public yes. relations, yes. marketing, mm -hmm. CEO, and it teaches you to be computer savvy for mm -hmm. $90 a year. Mm -hmm. You cannot That's pay nothing. for that in college. We're talking this. You, let's see, a semester you would spend maybe what? $45,000 if you majored in marketing or public relations or you wanted to be, become a CEO. It teaches you everything. And so that there alone, I always, when I speak to new members and I, I, I and like we talk about what it would bring for their public speaking part. I say, public speaking is easy. They say, what? I say, public speaking is easy. I say, once you get over your first icebreaker and I get you to your first part, oh, that's easy. I say, you know it's going to be hard? But I tell you, you got to, you have to write. You have to do a podcast. You have to do a blog. When I tell you, you have to write or give me a 10-minute speech about the blog, about this, you're going to be like, that's why I got to do all of that. Because you paid. Because mm -hmm. you're responsible for everything that happens to you. What a great quote to end this section with. I love it. Vincent, you're a gem. Thank you so much. We're going to move forward now because we have a great, um, I want to talk a little bit more about Sean. He has a, a nonprofit. He is a master presenter. He also is a life coach, motivational speaker, and community leader. And that's Sean Walker, my co-host. But also he has a wonderful nonprofit organization called MFL. Sean, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I can go ahead and talk about that this is an amazing program where i go in and i train the youth from ages 12 to 18 on 
how to communicate. Communication is a very important part of our makeup as individuals. By me going inside and talking to these kids, this gives the kids the opportunity to minimize the issues that they face with their peers. That's right. Communication help resolve conflict resolution amongst their peers. It also bridges the gap with adults and their parents. Being able to communicate, they will have that confidence to be advocates for themselves because ultimately the goal is to become an adult. And at the end of that, you will have to be an advocate for yourself once you cross that threshold. And I absolutely I love it. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Thank you so much. This is a video that was taken. You have a weekly uh, session with these. This I'm going to play this video, Sean, and we'll talk about it afterwards. It's not very long. Hello, everyone. This is a moment with Sean. I'm Sean Walker. That's right. The hottest motivational coach on the planet. That's right. Y'all know me. As I do, like I do always, I have individuals that I come in contact with, and I give them an opportunity to say what's on their heart. But today, this is someone that I met that is a potential client. We had a conversation. It wasn't a long conversation. But it was a conversation that was needed. I want to give him the opportunity to say what's on his heart. And y'all listen to him. Here he goes. How y'all doing? My name's Michelle. Uh, I'm a Navy vet. I've been served five years in the Navy. Just got out. And... I've been dealing with a lot of, you know, uh, communication issues, being able to articulate, being my true authentic self. I've always been an introverted person as a kid. Being only child, I didn't really socialize much. I was, was that kid that kept quiet and stayed away and just kept to himself. Um, so, but God had a reason for me going through that experience uh, because now I'm being placed in a position where I'm doing the, the entrepreneurship, YouTube, Cells, I need to be able to talk. If I can't talk, then I won't be able to be a good uh, vocal leader like uh, like Sean is. I want to be because it's been it's been years of me hiding my true self, not being able to talk, communicate, um, hiding who I am, and it's been uh, it's been it's been a very very emotional world roller coaster ride. Uh, every, when I met Sean, I knew it was meant to be because you know as soon as I stopped talking to him, he had everything that I've been praying for. And uh, as someone that I was looking for as a coach, a mentor, a father figure, you know, all that, uh, because I was lacking that as a child, which caused me to kind of uh, uh, a little become a little so uh, socially developed, become a little uh, developing the delay. I'm sorry, uh, I can't talk right now, <laughs> so that's why I need Sean. <laughs> but yeah, um, God, God put Sean in my life, and I can't thank God enough. Uh, I'm so happy. I'm actually, you know, wanna, uh, I feel like crying because. This man has literally changed my life, and I just met him. If I talk to him, I already know he's what he's offering is life changing. Uh, you won't be able to find this anywhere else. Uh, I consider myself super lucky and blessed right now because he's gonna. I know in not even two, three weeks, maybe a month, I'll be a completely different person. I'm gonna be. A, he's gonna grow, develop me to the type of person I was meant to become. And uh, yeah, I think I can't thank you enough, Sean. There you have it, and that's right. I met this individual in a facility today where I was training you. And I'm excited. You can see me. I'm just glowing right now because I know that God is truly working. I'm going to be helping so many people 2023. I already told y'all it is coming. And this has been another moment with Sean. Look at that. I ain't even telling to say that. Did I tell you to say that? You did not. <laughs> they just already know. I told you 2023. 2023 is go time. Thank y'all. Have a go. Sean, that is awesome. This was the original poster to kick off this training. It started a couple of weeks ago, January 10th, and it's going once a week. He's at the library with these kids that come over and really is making a positive difference. So I wanted to highlight this. Again, Sean, thank you so much for all that you do and uh, helping the kids. And helping them. <laughs> we all had a moment with Sean and I. So right now, I got to ask everybody, are you ready to be the speaker and and start your journey? It doesn't matter. We have Sean to help train you if you're at the beginning. We got Toastmasters, the best education in the entire world. 
least amount of money you pay for the most response and gets back that you get. And we are so excited and we want to get you on nine at night too. So we get to meet you. What a wonderful night, Sean and uh, Vincent. This is a good night to y'all. And uh, my video is going crazy again. So we're just going to call it a good night. Thank okay, you. Okay, Vincent. Thank you, brother. Thank no, you, brother. never a problem. Anytime. 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 <laughs>